Welcome. You found Uniquely Bristol. Hi, I'm Mark Thomas. Each month on Nutmeg Television, we're going to take a look at a city that has small town values and a lot of hidden treasures. Bristol, Connecticut, the all heart city. We're going to tell you about things you may or may not know about Bristol. This program is produced by the Bristol Development Authority, the BDA, and we want to thank Nutmeg TV for helping us bring it to you. Now think about what Bristol might be known for. Clock making, manufacturing, chrysanthemums, Yes, mums. Each September in Bristol hosts one of the state's largest festivals. It's cleverly called the Mum Festival. Originally called the Fall Festival, the Bristol Mum Festival was originally held on Sunday, October 7th in 1962, and it celebrated chrysanthemums, formerly a major product of the town. Over the course of the weekend, the 2017 Mum Festival will feature a carnival and 130 other vendors, including area businesses, crafters, food trucks, community organizations, children's programming, adult beverages, and all-day live entertainment. Recently, I was at Memorial Boulevard School, where the Mum Festival is held, and I got a chance to talk to some of the head chairmen of the event. Well, I'm here with Jack Ferraro, the chair of the Mum Festival, and Jack, right now we're at Memorial Boulevard School. It's just the geese, but you're in the final throes of getting all of the details done for the 2017 Mum Festival. We are. Uh, we've been working very hard since uh, January. Right. The you know, festival ends, you know, last week of September, and we start right up in January. We do our critique meeting. Um, we start to evaluate what we did right. Right. What right. we could have made different you know and more exciting and I think this year we are going to have a festival that is going to be over the top. Food is always a big hit at the Mum Festival. Andrea Andy Adams is the co-chair in charge of vendors. We have a barbecue, we have waffles with ice cream, we have your traditional steamed cheeseburgers, hot dogs, we have these uh, gourmet sliders, we have some Polish food, Greek food, and I'm not even getting into the nitty gritty, but we have a lot of food vendors, and then we have a lot of craft vendors that have coming in, some really unique stuff, um, bird houses and wind chimes, your jewelry, typical jewelry vendors, some soy, handmade soy candles. I have a guy who actually has a patent on a marshmallow gun, who is, he says, hey, I heard about it from my friend who was there last year, I want to get in on the action. So he signed up and he's going to be a vendor. One of the main highlights of the Bristol Mum Festival is all the live entertainment. Maria Solis chairs those events. So we have something for everyone. We have a huge 18-piece uh, actually jazz orchestra, which we're really excited about. It's a new um, uh, addition this year. That's going to be our opening band uh, Thursday night at the Jazz and Arts Gala. And then um, Friday night, we start with the Old Time Fiddlers. We have um, some area entertainers also, and then we have an 80s rock uh, trivia band on Friday night. And then Saturday, really something for everyone, we have a whole lineup of uh, mostly rock, uh, all original bands and all hailing from Connecticut with the exception of one band from Holyoke, Massachusetts. So we're keeping it kind of local and it's nice. And then our headliner band is the Balkan Brothers, which they were here last year. Uh, they rock the festival and we hope they'll do it again. We also have a, a satellite stage this year, which is down further um, off the uh, off of the main uh, area uh -huh. where we're having like smaller acts, um, solo acts, acoustic. We have a magician. Um, we also have a clown coming that will juggle, and we have we're going to do carpool karaoke with the kids. <laughs> it's more kids entertainment, so more family, um, you know, family based entertainment down there. We actually have a trackless train. We're setting up a train station that'll be just opposite the monument. Right. It's going to be running up and down the boulevard uh, for because we're. And that's, that's an important thing. We have activities this year going all the way to the end of the boulevard. Pretty much everything was around the field last year. And uh, our activities are extending uh, past the ponds this year with, with car shows, uh, hay rides. 
pony rides, uh, a petting zoo, uh, well, just a myriad of different It's uh, one of the few things, you know, in Bristol and probably everywhere that it doesn't matter what age you are, there's something that you can find in this and it's, it's just a great thing to come to, isn't it? It, it is. The Mum Festival is almost a, a whole month-long event, and there's things all the way up to it. We, we, we do, and there, it's, we call it the Mum Season of Events, right. okay? And there are several events like the Mumathon, um, Miss Mum, um, and several other events. We, we actually have the Rock, uh, Rock and Gem Show is joining us uh, this year. Um, and uh, the Clock Museum is joining us along with Witch's Dungeon uh, for Halloween. So we have a lot of, yeah. It, so we're extending actually from September to the beginning of September to the end of October with the Mum Season of Events. One of the reasons the Mum Festival is a success is the marketing. Shannon Tack directs those efforts. We are going to be working with a drone photographer and videographer. So he's going to be getting some footage of um, what's going on on Thursday night, during the day on Saturday, and then what I'm most excited for is to get some footage of the parade on Sunday. I don't think as the city we've ever had a um, aerial footage of our parade before, so that'll be really cool to see, and we're really excited to share that with everyone involved and the whole city once, um, once we have all that footage together. We've been doing a lot of posts about the, um, what you can expect this year with the events and things like that and the vendors, so we're really excited and we really want to um, get the word out to people that they need to like us and follow us on Facebook so that way they'll find out more information about what's going to be going on. With such a large crowd and so many things happening at the Mum Festival, Patrick Kilby oversees all the safety aspects. Patrick, a lot of new things for the Mum Festival, and we can never forget because we've got kids of all ages there about safety. What, what are we doing to keep the kids and everybody else safe during the festival? Well, we have a lot of procedures in place to keep everyone safe. We have an ambulance by Bristol Hospital on site. We have an EMT that's going to be on site the entire event. We have the Bristol Police Department and Bristol Fire Department that are also going to be on site helping out and assisting with us. So we have a lot of safety procedures and a lot of protocols in place in case anything does happen. And new this year is really something you've joined a lot of different uh, emergency medical people and, and safety people to be here, haven't you? Absolutely. Yep, we've teamed up with Yale Hospital this year. Yale's actually sending their Sky Health helicopter down for the Touch a Vehicle event. So we actually have a multi-million dollar medical helicopter coming into the event this year as well for the now, second year. And we're having fireworks for the first time. We and are. That, that, there's a lot of concern on, on that. So what, what are we doing to make sure that this uh, comes off without a hitch? Yep, we have uh, EMT, who's also a medic on scene. We have the Bristol Police Department that's going to be securing the fireworks location as mm -hmm. well as the Bristol Fire Department. All those men and women are going to be keeping our seen safe down here and they're going to set a perimeter and be on site the entire time that we have that firework display down here for everyone. Last year's Mum Festival drew almost 20,000 people to downtown Bristol over the four days. This year's event should be even bigger and better. It all starts Thursday, September 21st and ends on Sunday the 24th. For more information on the Bristol Mum Festival, log on to www.bristolmumfestival.com. Welcome to Bristol, nestled in the heart of Connecticut, just two hours from Boston, New York, and an hour from the shoreline, Bristol offers a unique New England experience. City size with small town vibe, you'll fit in no matter your pace. As a community, we're rich with history, overflowing with passion, and ripe with experiences to enjoy. Beyond the rolling hills of Connecticut, that's where you'll find the magic of Bristol. With an incredible 700 plus acres of park systems, inspiring museums and cultural programs, and the oldest operating amusement park in North America. Our arts and entertainment will color you convinced. And local food and drink establishments to keep you excited, satisfied, and always savoring more. Community events that leave a lasting memory. We really do have it all. Plus, we're a community that honors the brave. A community that offers top-tier sports and recreation. And world-class accommodations to suit every style. But what if you wanted to stay even longer? Well, there's neighborhoods to pair with any personality. And places for all kinds of producers. Top-rated school systems. Ways to make an impact and plenty of places to worship. So whether you're vacationing 
passing through, or staying a little longer. Bring your heart to Bristol. Our heart is always open to your experiences. Bristol, Connecticut. All, All hearts. Heart. Don't you wish you could be a kid again? There's a place where that can happen. It's the New England Carousel Museum in downtown Bristol. Tucked in the vintage building at 95 Riverside Avenue in Bristol is a collection of wood animals that come to life and thrive, pleasing kids and kids at heart. For the past 27 years, thousands of visitors have entered the museum and instantly transported back to a time where the only fun you needed was a carousel. You know, Louise, you've spent your entire life and career dedicated to museums. I think I know the answer to this question after talking to you, but I have to think that the New England Carousel Museum here in Bristol has got to be the love of your life. There's no question that I'm passionate about this subject matter, and I'm thrilled to pieces with the evolution of this museum. Um, to have, from the beginning, the opportunity to uh, hopefully bring my vision to fruition um, has, been a real, has been a real treat for me in my lifetime. Um, but no one person does it by themselves, and as you know, I've been surrounded by fabulous people, um, many who have fallen off of this freight train that's been <laughs> moving, um, and many who are still with us, who have helped us bring it to where it is today. Now, this has got a big history. This was, had a very unique, before the Carousel Museum was here, it, has, it used to be a manufacturing for garments? Yeah, actually, it was part of the Bristol Manufacturing Company. It was a three-building complex. There were two three-floor buildings down closer to Riverside Avenue, and then this was the one in the background that was a, a two-level building. And they made women's hosiery. They made women's underthings. And they called it the Ladies' Seminary and because so many women worked here. But that's how it had its beginnings, I think, in 1837. You can't ha help but come in here and have a smile on your face because whether it's the bright colors, the subject matter, or I'm, a, I'm imagining that a lot of people come here to kind of relive their youth. I think that's all true. Um, the thing that I find most fun is to come out and stand and listen to new groups come in the door. And to, to a person, they walk into the main gallery and they say, oh, wow. <laughs> And, and when people don't believe me, they'll come and stand here and listen, and the next 10 groups that come in will say, oh, wow. Because I think it is a, a visual, Im the visual impact of seeing the museum. Most people don't think this is what they're going to get when they come in the front door. The carousel is made up of a lot of components. It's not just horses, it's menagerie figures, which are lions and tigers and goats and giraffes and zebras and pigs and cows and chickens and whatever. They're rarer, there were less of them on carousels at the turn of the century, and so there are less of them that survive today, which adds to their value, of course. But in addition to that, there are chariots, the bench seats that people prefer to ride on, um, the, the valence at the top of the ride, which are called rounding boards, shields, and many decorative pieces. And so it's really a fabulously put together art, moving art form, which is what it boils down to. What I love about this, it's, it's European and American, it's, it's uh, the entire country, but you can even come in here and, and almost everybody in Bristol knows Lake Compounds, and there's even an early Lake Compounds horse here. Yes. Now, people get confused about that because that is not, that is not from the spiffy new ride they put in place <laughs> in 1911. The one that's operating down there now is the one that was installed in 1911. This one was before 1911, wow. and it was made by the U.S. Merry-Go-Round Company, and it was very primitive. Um, and so when the new spiffy one came, they threw this one away, and apparently park maintenance people or whoever took some home. They put them on the trash pile and um, people ended up with them and then Stretch Norton in his early days um, passed it along, had someone pass it along to us uh, telling us that it was one of the original Lake Compound species. With the Carousel Museum came the donation of a carousel, a working carousel for our building which added a whole new level to our ability to serve the public because that's the ultimate hands-on activity yeah. in a carousel museum um, and we're very fortunate that a major donor stepped up a few years ago and donated a carousel to us. You know my father was a wood carver so what I thought was extremely interesting is it's just not the finished product or one that's been back a long time there's actually a section of the museum of how they're made. 
Oh, for sure. We not only have an exhibition on the carving bay that shows you the process, but we have pieces scattered throughout the museum that show you carousel pieces in various states of disrepair and, and repair. So we'll show you a pieces in a basket, how they've come together so it's, it's stripped down to the bare wood. The next phase would be the primer stage and so there are horses in here in primer paint and they look like white plaster statues but they're not. They're just prepared, uh, made ready for the painters to apply their magic brushes uh, to breathe life back into these pieces and then obviously finished pieces as well. You, you know what I find amazing, this is one of the great attractions of Connecticut but in between all of that and all the visitors, you have time to hold all of these events. Yes, and our events happen in two ways. We have events of our own creation, and this year we're doing 138 events. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, they, they range in size from um, the Harley Davidson Street Glide raffle that takes us six months to accomplish. Wow. So it's an enormous undertaking for us, but it's our biggest fundraiser of the year. Two more simple one day affairs. We've been having a really good time with uh, the princess teas that we're doing. And they're a Sunday afternoon, bring your, bring your little ones in their, gown, their ball gowns in their tiaras. And we've got a sea of children in here in their tiaras and it's just wonderful. And everything imaginable in between. And you have an art gallery uh, room in there that you can see? Yes, we have a changing art gallery and since I've opened that, mm, I've done over 70 shows in there. As a matter of fact, we have a new larger exhibition opening on the uh, 19th and it is going to be called Ink. And it's all about the history of tattoos and I think it's going to be exciting. Um, the other way that we do events here is that we do bookings. We do weddings and bar mitzvahs and wine tastings and showers and meetings and whatever. And you can call the museum and book your activity and hold it in one of our, either in the ballroom or in the Glow Sessions Gallery or it's right here on the main, on the main floor. I love the smaller weddings we do that are right here on the main floor. They're more intimate and they're right. charming. Um, but if you have to do a big knockdown dance and play and play hard upstairs in the ballroom we can do a sit-down dinner for 230 people. Wow. You know, for the price of admission, it's almost three to one, isn't it? You come in and you got the Carousel Museum, but then there's two other attractions. We put together, um, back in the day when Hap Barnes was still with us, uh, he donated his entire fire memorabilia collection to us. In 2002, we opened a fire museum on the second floor as a, um, to honor the Bristol Fire Department. And then of course we have the Museum of Greek Culture upstairs. And that's kind of still in its infancy and so it hasn't really reached its full potential, but we're hoping this year that it will. So what are some of the rare uh, museum pieces here that, that intrigue you or get the most attention? Well, I mean, it's like your children. <laughs> They all get the same exact amount every day. <laughs> and some are older than others. <laughs> yes, yes, and you never say one's more your favorite than the other. But there are certainly pieces here that are extraordinary. There are, our, our collection that's on display is threefold. Our own private collection for the museum, which of course is wonderful, we started with the one horse 27 years ago and today we have a substantial collection of our own. And secondly, our pieces that are on long-term loan to the museum by private collectors. And that, that is invaluable to us because that keeps us changing and, and adding to what the visual impact is all the time. And then the third, which is I think the most exciting, are the pieces that come in for restoration. Because they come in the door in one state and they go out the door, having gone through the process, just with new life breathed back into them. And so it's really quite exciting. And that keeps things change, changing up all the time. Never a dull moment here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe it? They let me on the carousel. I guess it's time to stop horsing around. So that's it for this edition of Uniquely Bristol. You want to know more about the New England Carousel Museum, go to their website, www.thecarouselmuseum.org. Want to know more about Bristol? Go to www.bristolallheart.com. I'm Mark Thomas, and that's this edition of Uniquely Bristol.